So I don't know why this is happening, but there are certain Democratic Party presidential candidates who are trying to promote their campaigns by propping up the U.S. war machine. And they're doing this, I'm assuming, to make themselves more popular among young people. So that's weird. And an example of this came just a couple of weeks ago when Mayor Pete floated the idea of a national service program where young people all serve one year. Now, I don't like that idea, and I especially don't like the idea of making that mandatory. And in an interview with Rachel Maddow, he actually talked about the prospect of making that compulsory. And Maddow even brought up the draft, so we keep getting crazier and crazier, and he didn't unequivocally condemn that and say, you know, no, we're not talking about the draft. Of course not, because that word has very negative connotations, but he just kind of was like, eh. Okay. So this is certainly not something that I think would appeal to young Democratic Party primary voters. But nonetheless, in addition to that, Pete Buttigieg has attacked Donald Trump because he lied about being disabled in order to dodge the draft for the Vietnam War. And what I find interesting is that Pete Buttigieg isn't the only Democrat who has criticized Donald Trump for this because da Tammy Duckworth is another person who has clowned on him and called him Cadet Bone Spurs because he apparently said he had bone spurs in order to dodge the draft. They honestly believe that that's how they should be attacking Donald Trump. They have no clue how tone deaf they are because as Will Menneker puts it, skating on Vietnam is the only normal, relatable, and even moral thing Trump has ever done in his entire life. Exactly. Because <laughs> this is not how you want to hit Donald Trump because if you ask millennials, people my age, would you actually um, fight in a war and kill other human beings in the event you were drafted? Our answer, I'd bet nine times out of 10, would be, Absolutely not. It's out of the question. No way. I'm not killing other human beings because my government is telling me that the people in this other country are the enemy. Fuck out of here. It's a ridiculous proposition. And what really is irritating to me is that what I see is that these are Democrats who are preying on the economic desperation of young people. Because the people who I know personally, like my friends, They've only ever joined the military if they felt like they didn't have any other option. Like if they couldn't find a job, um, if they couldn't afford to go to college, they joined the military. And I actually just reconnected with one of my buddies who got back from serving. And I asked him, so uh, what'd you think? How was it? His answer, worst fucking experience of my life. So they're really preying on people's desperation and trying to exploit that in order to prop up the U.S. war machine. And the fact that Democrats are doing this, you'd expect Republicans who are, you know, loyal servants to the military industrial complex, you'd expect them to do that. But for, but for Democrats to do it this often now, it just demonstrates how far the Democratic Party has shifted to the right. Now, moving on from Pete Buttigieg and Tammy Duckworth, there's another person who has uh, floated the idea of encouraging Americans to join the military. It's someone who none of us has uh, ever heard of, uh, Seth Moulton. He is the 157,000th uh, presidential candidate, and he's really excited about his plan. Take a look. That's why I'm calling today uh, for the biggest call to national service since World War II, a way to take us forward and meet the challenges of this new economy and a changing world. You know, America has always risen to the challenges that face our country with a call to service. That's how we uh, surmounted the Great Depression. It's how we won World War II, and it's how we put a man on the moon, by calling everyone to get behind a common mission and having everyone do their part. And so I'm asking all 33 million young Americans to, to consider serving their country as well. Not to make it a requirement, but an expectation that Americans will, will take a part in our future, take a part in serving our country. And if, if America, if you invest in America, then America will invest in you. And so coupled with this call to service is a new national education guarantee modeled on the GI Bill to say that if you serve your country, you will get to go to college or to vocation.
people, we will make that investment in you. That's the kind of forward-looking policy that I think we need to meet the challenges of a changing world, to address climate change, to bring broadband to rural communities, and to say to America, we need a common mission. We need to be united going forward as a country. Ha! Gay! Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> and he's saying this with this big stupid-ass grin on his face as if people are going to hear this and think, Wow, what an amazing proposal. Quote, I'm calling today for the biggest call to national service since World War II. And he wants all 33 million young Americans to consider serving. Why? See, during World War II, there was actually a threat to the world, to international peace and stability. Hitler, the Nazis... But now, what's the threat? We're kind of the threat. We're invading countries. And we're trying to invade more countries. So what are we fighting? What are we doing? All we're doing is we are illegally invading other countries to steal their resources. That's what this is about. Don't take my word for it. Take John Bolton's word for it, who said a couple of months ago in an interview with Fox Business that wouldn't it be nice if we got into Venezuela and allowed U.S. oil companies to profit off of that. So this doesn't make sense, but what he's trying to do is formulate this plan to where he entices Americans to join. And he's trying to frame this as, well, we're going to have them join to fight climate change. Sure, sure Jan. Jan. But here's what he says. He wants to launch a large-scale national recruiting effort to reach all 33.4 million Americans aged 17 to 24 and ask them to serve their country. Provide an education benefit modeled on the GI Bill concept. 60% of in-state tuition or a job training benefit up to $14,000 for a one-year commitment. 80% or a job training benefit of up to $19,000 for a two-year commitment, 100% or $24,000 in training for a three-year commitment, and he wants to create a federal Green Corps, build a new national service organization with the mission of combating climate change and protecting our environment, make national service a cabinet position, uh, elevate the administrator of the newly restructured national and community service, you know, I'm just, I'm not going to explain anymore or read the rest because... Um, I've already lost interest. This just sounds like a really stupid plan. And he's pandering by trying to make this about climate change. But this is why his plan to recruit us to join the military specifically to fight climate change is not thought out. Because if you truly wanted to organize this mass of people to fight climate change, what would be better? What would be more effective? Opening it up to everyone? To get a job to help, you know, um, increase green infrastructure in the country, invest in wind, solar, and hydro, or limit that eligibility pool to 17 to 24-year-olds and just have them fight climate change but join the military to do it. Like, this plan doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. And this is my question. So, if he wants to entice young people to join by offering up these benefits, such as healthcare and education, well, how about this? Here's my counter offer. We're already serving our country by working and paying taxes. So how about you just give us those things anyway? Give us healthcare and education anyway, and not make young people have to join the military in order to get those benefits. I mean, <laughs> why should we have to dedicate a year to three years of our short lives to serve the military industrial complex, to fight for U.S. imperialism, to fight for a machine that profits off of death and destruction. Why should we have to do that and jump through that hoop just to get healthcare and education? Why can't we just get healthcare and education? Why do we have to sign up to kill people? who pose no threat to us in order to get healthcare and education. This is why this logic is just, it's ass backwards, and it's honestly, it's offensive that he thinks we should have to do that to get healthcare. Fuck you, Seth. Give us healthcare anyway. That's what 
our tax dollars are supposed to be paying for them. Not wars in the Middle East and North Africa, but we pay tax dollars because we're supposed to get a return on that investment. So fuck you. How dare you suggest that we need to go kill people to get an education? This infuriates me because it shows how out of touch Democrats are. And this idiot is so proud of this dumb plan that if you go to his website, it's literally one of his biggest platform planks. That's how proud of it he is. And by the way, if you're curious as to how well this plan was received by people, well, he got ratioed into oblivion. <laughs> because <laughs> I just, I find this predatory. I find it predatory. Like, Young people are so desperate currently. They know that they can't go to college unless they expect to be burdened with, you know, student loan debt that they're going to have until they die. So what you're trying to do is prey on them. Say, hey, you want some relief? You want health care? Join the military. Join the U.S. empire effort to invade every fucking country that we want to invade. And then we'll give you those things. How about this? How about you go fuck yourself, Seth? And... You work to get us those things anyway, because these are things that should be guaranteed to us on the basis of citizenship, not on the basis of us signing up to kill people who pose no threat to us. The more that Democrats keep jumping on board with this pro-U.S. empire agenda and, you know, this national service recommendation, the more that they harp away at Donald Trump being a draft dodger, the more that they look tone deaf and out of touch.